Shout one time for the sword of the Lord and shout one time for Gideon. This message is entitled Gideon. And Gideon, he was a type and shadow of the Gentile messenger, the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. Now, when we say the Shahada, when we say there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger, this is foreseen right here in the story of Gideon. If you haven't read it, I recommend you read this. This is in Judges chapter 6. And I am just going to highlight certain parts of this scripture. Now, Judges chapter 6, verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with you, thou mighty man of valor. Now, many people heard that saying, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. This is a picture of the prophet Muhammad. Gideon was visited by an angel, and so was the prophet Muhammad. Now, the first time an angel appeared in the Bible, guess who it was to? At wrong. It was to Hagar and Ishmael. So when we talk about the revelation of the prophet Muhammad, being visited by an angel, this is confirmed. This is confirmed in Genesis. This is confirmed in the story of Gideon. Now, what I want to do is I want to go to verse 14. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? Now, we know the prophet Muhammad was sent. Could no man who was unlearned be able to produce a copy of the Quran? He had to have supernatural help. And this is seen in the Quran when the Quran tells us that the prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Going down to verse 15. And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Now, the least is going into the Gentiles. Now, Israel was high above all nations. They was the cream of the crop. All the other nations were considered unclean. They were considered the least. They were considered nobodies. Verse 16, and the Lord said unto him, surely I will be with you and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Now think of Moses, one man that God used to give us the law. Same thing with the prophet Muhammad. God used one man, Solomon, Solomon, to bring us the Quran. He used one man to start the second largest religion in the world. And right now, Islam is the fastest growing religion. That all started with one man. In the Quran 933, it tells us that Islam will prevail above all religions. So don't listen to people who say the Quran has no prophecy. The Quran has prophecy. And it is true because right now, Islam is on its way to being the largest religion on planet Earth by the year 2050, 2075, definitely. Now let's talk about the sign of the unleavened bread. Now leavened bread is bread with yeast. And the children of Israel were commanded not to eat this during the killing of the firstborn. Okay, because simply put, Leavened bread is going into the teaching that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. So let's just skim down to Judges 6.21. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes 
Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. So the unleavened bread is going into a teaching that Jesus did not rise from the dead. Okay. In Islam, we believe Jesus will die later. Now, Gideon and the prophet Muhammad have a lot in common. Now, when the prophet was visited by the angel the first time, he was told to read, although he could not read. And the angel had to tell him three times, okay? He needed a lot of confirmation. And Gideon was the same way. He wanted a lot of confirmation. He was the type of prophet that would throw in the fleece. He would pray things like, okay, God, if you're going to be with me, then I need you to do this sign. Now, we know that the Quran talks about signs all the time. And so Gideon and the prophet Muhammad had a lot in common, especially when it came to knowing and wanting to know that the Most High was with them. Now I want to talk about the prostration to Allah. Judges chapter 7 verse 5. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lap, putting their hand to their mouth, were three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. So here we have the prophet bringing the people to the water. Now, the prophet Muhammad was the only prophet to bring us to the water to perform wudu, such as ablution. All the ritual washings, the prophet Muhammad brought us to the water. Not only that, the prophet Muhammad taught us how to prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like Gideon, he has his men right now prostrating in this passage. Now, I don't need to read all of it. I'm just going to continue to skim. And now I want to go to Isaiah Chapter 60, arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about, and see, all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from far, and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah all they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring golden incense and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. Verse 7 is key. All the flocks of Kadar. Now Kadar is the second eldest of Ishmael. Shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nebioth. Now Nebioth is the firstborn of Ishmael. Shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance upon mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory, which we believe is the Kaaba. Now, this actually took place in history. This happened in 629 CE when the prophet Muhammad invaded Mecca, all right, with 10,000 Muslims, exactly, fulfilling the prophecy of Deuteronomy 33 and 2. The Jews were expecting him, okay? They didn't know they was in for a surprise, okay? They was following the prophecies of Isaiah 29 and Isaiah 60. Isaiah has a lot to say about the prophet Muhammad. 
So they were in Medina. They was expecting the arrival of a prophet. Now, this is a prophecy about a holy man bringing the light of God. That is the Quran. Gross darkness is covering the people. Even back then, when he brought a monotheistic religion in the midst of pagans, polytheists, even today, the darkness is covering the people. And what is that? The teachings of the New Testament. But right now, everybody is coming to the glorious light of the Quran. Now, most people don't want to admit that this is talking about none other than the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. Now, I want to take you to Gideon. Gideon did the same thing. And many of us read this story, but we didn't fully catch it. So I want to take you to Judges 7, 17. And he said unto them, look on me and do likewise. Let's pause right there. We ain't in a rush. Look on me and do likewise. Everything we are doing, we are following in the example of the prophet. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. When I blow with a trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets. Also on every side of all the camp and say, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Now pause. He wanted everyone to say the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Now in Islam, what do we say? There is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. So we put God first when we say the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Now in Islam, it's the same way, same order. We say there is no God but Allah and then Muhammad is his messenger. Muhammad is last, just like Gideon is last, but they're both highly honored. Now this man was sent by God and he had a right to say that. He said the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So we have the Shahada right here in the Bible. So the Shahada is right here in the book of Judges. The first time the Shahada has ever came into being was right here in the life of Gideon. And we're not worshiping him. That wasn't worshiping Gideon. Nobody was worshiping him. This is just the way God chose to send this man. And it's the same thing. Don't be jealous. Don't think we're idolizing the prophet Muhammad. We're not. This is just the order. We say there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Now, that's the part of the message right here. I wanted to focus on. I'm going to read it again. When I blow with the trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp and say the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch. Now, as Muslims, we up all times of the night. We up in the middle watch. <laughs> OK, and they approached the camp in the middle watch and they had but newly set the watch and they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands. Now, when they broke the pitchers, those were the lanterns. When you break the outside of the lamp, the light shines brighter. And that's exactly what we do. We are breaking the pitchers. Now, think about pitch. Pitch means black. And I took you to Isaiah 60. The light shined in the darkness. It pierced through the gross darkness. Breaking the pitchers is breaking the idols. And that's what we do. Once you destroy the idolatry that is in the church, then the good news that is in the Quran shines brighter. And this is a picture of Gideon. And this is a type and shadow of the prophet Muhammad breaking the idols, just like Gideon 
breaking the pitchers so the light could shine brighter. And they break the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands. You see, we got that metaphor in Islam where we do certain things with the left hand and we do certain things with the right hand. See, this is a picture of Islam right here in your Bible. Okay, this is not the Quran. This is the Bible. We're in the Hebrew scriptures. And Gideon has an instruction with the left hand, and he has an instruction with the right hand. Just like us in Islam, we have certain instructions to follow with the right hand, and we have certain instructions to follow with the left hand. This is a picture of the Prophet Muhammad right here in the Holy Bible. This is not the Quran. This is in the Old Testament right here. I'm in Judges. And we are seeing the exact same thing in the life of Gideon as we see in the life of the prophet Mohammed. Going on. And the trumpets in their right hands to blow with all. And they cried the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Now picture us saying there is no God. But Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. That's like the most powerful thing you can say with your mouth. Okay, you are recognizing the one and only true God and you are recognizing the one and only true prophet. Okay, that delivered this message going on. Verse 21, and they stood every man in his place round about the camp and all the hosts ran and cried and fled. And the 300 blew the trumpets, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow. And throughout all the hosts, and the hosts fled to Beth Shittah in Zerarath, and to the border of Abel Mahola, unto Tabah. And the men of Israel gathered themselves together out of Naphtali, and out of Asher, and out of all Manasseh, and pursued after the Midianites. And Gideon sent messengers throughout all Mount Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites, and take before them the waters unto Beth Barah and Jordan. Then all the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together, and took the waters unto Beth Barah and Jordan. And they took two princes of the Midianites, Oreb and Zeb, and they slew Oreb upon the rock Oreb, and Zeb they slew at the wine press of Zeb, and pursued Midian, and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon on the other side of the Jordan. So what we see is a prophet and a warrior. Same thing in the prophet Muhammad. He was a prophet and a warrior. He was like Samuel, okay? Samuel was a prophet, but he was a killer. Same thing like David. David was a prophet, but he was a killer. Now, now we're getting to the dessert of the message. This is going to be Judges chapter 8 and 22. Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, both you and your son, and your son's son also. For thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. Now, this is the guidelines of a true messenger. A true messenger doesn't have a successor. Why? Because we are not into that teaching. That the son is king. The son is the ruler. That's why Moses' sons didn't succeed him. That's why the prophet Mohammed did not have any successor. And Gideon is saying the same thing. He's saying, look, God is your king. 
and I don't want no son ruling. I'm not into Christianity. In other words, <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. He's saying I ain't teaching that son shall reign crap. This is the guideline. This is the handbook of a real messenger. This is why Gideon was honored. This is why they said the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Why? Because Gideon only acknowledged God as his king and he wasn't into that false teaching going on in Christianity that Jesus is the king of the church. That Jesus is the king of God. They even say that Jesus is the king of kings and lord of lords and we know that God is lord so I asked one person a question if I go to heaven and I see Jesus and God which one is king because we know one is prince and according to revelation Jesus is prince so which one is king and he's like oh, oh, oh I my father is one man get out of here get out of here with that I and my father is one don't you know that Jesus prayed in John 17, that we all would be one? That doesn't mean we God. It doesn't. Okay, so Gideon was the man that said, you know what? My son ain't going to be your king. His son ain't going to be your king. And his son ain't going to be your king. And I'm not going to be your king. Only God is going to be your king. This is why Gideon was honored. When they said sword of the Lord and of Gideon, because this is exactly why the prophet Muhammad is honored. He could have took over and made himself a king, but no, he made God king. Okay, he made God the Lord. Nobody else. And there is no successor because that would be going into a teaching that the sons are going to reign. And Gideon, he was a prophet. That man was a powerful messenger because we all can learn so much from this. Now let's go to verse 23. Gideon said unto them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. Let that sink in. Now, this is proof. This is talking about the prophet Muhammad and the nation of Islam, because look what pops up next in verse 24. And Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you that ye would give me every man the earrings of his prey, for they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites. Oh, all of a sudden Ishmael pops up. When we're talking about the one and only true God being the one and only true king, then Ishmael pops up because Ishmael has that religion. Same thing with Joseph. When Joseph was falsely murdered and who came to his rescue? Who saved him? The Ishmaelites, because it's the exact same thing with the prophet Isa. We know what really happened to the prophet Isa. You call him Jesus. He was not murdered. His murder was false. Allah took him alive. Okay, so let's keep going on. Because now we want to talk about Abimelech. Now, Abimelech was the son of Gideon. And he violates his father's instructions. This man, Abimelech, is a type and shadow of, guess who? Paul. Let's go to Judges chapter 9, verse 2. Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem. Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem. Whether it's better for you, either that all the sons of Jerubbaal, now Jerubbaal is another name for Gideon which are three score and ten persons. So he had 70 sons reign over you or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. So he's saying, look, hey, <laughs> they got different mamas, y'all. <laughs> I'm your people. Let me be king. Now, Gideon just gave us 
the guideline on how you're supposed to run a nation. Only God is supposed to be king. But here we have Abimelech. He's violating that. He wants all of his brothers killed so he can be king. Verse 3. And his mother's brethren spake of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem. All these words in their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech. For they said, he is our brother. And they gave him three score and ten pieces of silver out of the house of Baal Barak. Wherewith Abimelech hired vain and like persons which Followed him. This is a picture of Christianity. Let's keep going. And he went unto his father's house at Ophrah and slew his brothers, the son of Jerubbabal, Gideon, being threescore and ten persons upon one stone. Notwithstanding, yet Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubbabal, was left. For he hid himself. So this man killed the sons so he can be king. That's exactly what Paul did. Paul killed Jesus on biblical record so he could be king. That's what he did. Now Gideon had a son that got away. His name was Jotham. And this son is a picture of Christ. Because this son is testifying against him this son is a witness against him for what he has done okay just like Jesus is a witness against Paul for what he has done Paul is like Akon he committed a serious trespass he stole his father's church and Joshua or Yahshua was in trouble for what Achan has done. And God told Joshua. I'm not going to be with you no more. Until you destroy the accursed from among you. And that's why Jesus is a witness against the church. And he will destroy the cross. That's the first thing he will do. When he descends amongst us as a just ruler. So Judges chapter 9 verse 18. And ye are risen up against my father's house this day. See, my father's house. Who is that talking? Who talks like that? Christ talks like that. My father's house. He never once claimed ownership of the church. That was Paul. Jesus always said, this is my father's house. And you are risen up against my father's house this day. And have slain his sons. Three score and ten persons upon one stone and have made Abimelech the son of his maidservant king. Now, who is the son of the handmaid that was made king? Jesus. Jesus was killed by Paul. Jesus was killed by Paul on biblical record. And then Paul made the same man he killed king. There is nothing new under the sun. The son of his maid servant king over the men of Shechem because he is your brother. Let's go to Judges 9 and 21. And Jotham ran away. That's a picture of Christ. Remember, Joseph got him out. He got away. Remember in the Quran it says, and Allah took him. So right now, Jesus is preparing to be the witness against the Christians. And Jotham ran away and fled, just like Joseph, and went to Beer <laughs> and dwelt there for fear of Abimelech, his brother. So he got out of there. He got out of there. He told him, look, I seen what you did, and I am a witness against you. And he prayed against what his brother had done. Because what his brother did was evil. Just like what Paul did, it was evil. How are you going to kill Jesus through letters and then make him king? No, you made yourself king. That's exactly what Paul did. Now let's go to verse 53. 
And a certain woman cast a piece of a millstone upon Abimelech's head and all to break his skull. So just like Saul was beheaded, just like Paul was beheaded, here we have a millstone because this was the man that tried to change the laws. A millstone fell on Abimelech's head, which is a picture of Paul. Now let's talk about this stone. This is going to be Matthew 21 and 42. Jesus said unto them, did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same is become the head of the corner. Now, this is talking about the prophet Muhammad. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you. And given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. This is talking about a nation of people who believes in repentance. Christianity don't teach repentance. Christianity teaches that one man has died so you can be justified from your evil actions. Christianity teaches that one man died so that you can be justified for your sins. Verse 44. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. So if you repent, okay, you're going to be broken. This stone is going to break you whether you fall on it or it falls on you. Okay, but it will be better for you if you fall on that stone. Because guess what happens when the stone falls on you? But on whomsoever... It shall fall. It will grind him to powder. Now, this is exactly what happened to Abimelech. The stone fell upon him by a certain woman. Okay. Now, think about it. Paul is the one who's been killing the church. And he is a picture of the king Agon, whose sword made many women childless. Paul is responsible for many women being made childless right now. He gave us new relationship laws. He teaches that a man should have only one woman. Paul was against the law of procreation. That's why he said every man should be just like him. He was single. Okay, so this is a picture of Paul getting what he deserves. He's been making women childless. So here we have a woman dropping a stone on a Bibelic's head. Now, let's go to Abimelech's death and Saul's death and see if they're similar. Judges 9, 54. Then he called hastily unto the young man his armor bearer and said unto him, Draw thy sword and slay me. That men say not of me, a woman slew him. And his young man thrust him through and he died. So he has so much pride. He wasn't about to allow a woman to kill him. Okay, so now let's go to 1 Chronicles 10 and 4. Then says Saul to his armor bearer, draw your sword and thrust me through therewith, lest these uncircumcised come and abuse me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was sore afraid. So Saul took a sword and fell upon it. So there's another story that says someone killed him. And we believe that that person who did that, he was a man that was of Amalek, was lying. But either way it go, there's something fishy about Saul's death. But we see it is similar. They had so much pride that they did not want to die by their enemy. Now, I made a discovery with abuse in the Bible. If you type in abuse... In the standard 66 book Bible, you're going to find out that abuse only comes up with Saul of the Old Testament and Saul of the New Testament. Why? Because the Christian church is under abuse. And that's by the wolf and sheep clothing. Okay, you are being abused. You are under abuse. Okay, you are in a domestic relationship in that Christian church. You need to get out of there. Just like Joseph got out of there when Potiphar's wife was all over him, you need to get up out of there, okay? Because you are being abused. 
Now, most people will say, how could Abimelech be a type and shadow of Paul if he is the son of Gideon? Gideon was the son of a strange woman, a woman of another nation. And remember, Christians and the Jews are the sons of Korah. Now, when I say sons of Korah, that's a metaphor. The sons of the Quran, okay? God is going to give every Muslim a Jew and a Christian and is going to say, this is your ransom from the fire. And when I say the sons of Korah, I'm simply saying they are the children of assumption. They have no ground to stand on. And just like the ground swallowed up the real sons of Korah, it's the same exact thing what the word of God has done to the Christians and the Jews. The ground or the word has swallowed them up. This is seen in Numbers 16, 28 through 33. And the Hadith is going to be in the book of repentance, chapter 8, 27, 67. Abu Musa reported that Allah's messenger said, may Allah be pleased with him, when it will be the day of resurrection, Allah will deliver to every Muslim, a Jew or a Christian, and say that this is your rescue or your ransom from the fire. Okay, the Christians and the Jews are the sons of Korah. They the sons of the Quran, just like they try to make it so that Jesus was the son that died for them. Okay, you sons of Korah are going to be our rescue. Y'all going to be our ransom. Y'all going to be our sons. Okay? That is going to be the ransom for us. God has you in his trick bag. Just like Daniel was ransomed, just like the three Hebrew boys, the people that threw them in the fire, well, the fire came out on them. So you are the sons of the Quran, because you are going to be our ransom from the fire. They are the sons of the Quran, and many of them are converting to Islam. Anyway, the Jews are running to Islam, and the Christians are running to Islam. Now, I'm going to close it up, but I want to talk about Adam. And I want to tell you that Adam was like an aw damn. Think about it. When Adam sinned, it was just like, oh, damn. OK, and it's the same thing with the last Adam, because in the Quran, it tells us that Jesus in the sight of Allah is like that of Adam. God created him from dust, then said to him, be. And he was now the last Adam is an all oh, damn too. why? Because he has to clean up this mess. There is a huge mess that the apostate Paul made and that mess is Christianity. And it's written in Genesis 43 and 34 that Benjamin's mess was five times over. And what Paul has done, he's created the hugest mess. And the prophet Isa, peace be upon him, has to come and be the cleanup man. And he has to clean it up. So you just learned today that the real Gideon spirit is to be the man that wants God to be king. It's all about God being king, not the son being king. In Christianity, it's not about the father being king. It's all about a son being king. And I will end with the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth.